So now the big question, how do we retrieve the sample's perseverance left scattered across Mars? NASA's plan is bold. First, a lander touches down near Perseverance, carrying a tiny rocket called the Mars Ascent Vehicle. It's the first rocket ever designed to launch from another planet. The rover drives over, hands off the tubes, and Mission Control begins one of the craziest robotic handoffs in space history. But if the rover can't reach the lander, two small helicopters, evolved from ingenuity, swoop out, grab the tubes, and bring them home. Once the tubes are loaded, the Mars Ascent Vehicle ignites. A plume of fire in a thin alien sky, and humanity's first payload rockets off Mars. The samples drift in orbit, waiting for the next step. ESA's Earth Return Orbiter. It hunts the sample container, lines up, and gently captures it like a cosmic catcher's mitt. Then comes the long trip home. So why go through all this? Why billions of dollars, decades of engineering, and a chain of missions more complex than anything we've attempted? Because inside those tubes are answers we cannot get from any rover. Earth laboratories can measure isotopes atom by atom, detect subtle organic molecules, look for microstructures that could hint at ancient life. Instruments no rover could ever carry. One sample might reveal how long water lasted on Mars. Another might show ancient chemistry drifting towards the edge of biology. Another could rewrite everything we think we know about how planets evolve. And here's the thing. Even if we don't find life, we will still discover why Mars became a frozen desert instead of a blue world like Earth. Those tubes on the ground aren't debris. They're invitations, pieces of a story waiting for us to come pick them up. And when we finally hold them in a lab, we'll be holding the closest thing we've ever had to proof of whether we are alone or whether life has written its signature on more than one world.